先輩何バカ割り勘負け Whether it be through translator notes, being kept in the subtitles, or simple fan terminology, many Japanese words have slipped through the language barrier and managed to enter into fairly common usage. To varying levels of appropriateness and cringe. Some of the most persistent are honorifics san, kun, chan, sama, dono, maidogu, etc. This is understandable considering how omnipresent they are. As stated in the Routledge course in Japanese translation, in Japanese conversation, the social relationship between the speaker and the addressee is identified by honorifics and other linguistic means. In English, encoding such information is optional, which presents a little bit of a problem for translators. One would expect a translation to leave as few words untranslated as possible. Barring a few plot crucial terms that have an in story explanation, lest you fall into an <laughs> situation. But honorifics are so embedded into the language, such a commonplace part of communication and social standing, that they themselves can sometimes be plot crucial, and it can be tough to change them without losing something in the process. Let's take a look at some of the ways this can be addressed and their pros and cons. One option is to directly translate into an equivalent English title, for example, commonly, sung into Mr. or Mrs. This can work well for a period piece or something in a fantasy setting, where the archaic nature of the language makes sense. It can also work if there is a certain cultural posterity to the relationship. Nah, fuck, I'm going back inside. For example, in the dub of Kaguya Summer, Hayasaka refers to the titular character as Lady Kaguya, which feels appropriate considering that she is her maid and also due to the affluent status of the setting in general. A lot of the time, though, in a modern setting, this feels very clunky and inappropriate, such as is the case in the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. It may be appropriate for characters like Nagato and Koizumi to refer to their peers using Mr. and Miss, considering that they are a space alien robot trying to understand humanity and a gay weirdo, respectively. But it's not for casual teenagers, Kion and Haruhi. In Japanese, both are fairly lax with how they use honorifics. Haruhi uses chan and san with people that she likes, and Kion only uses san towards people that he respects or that are much older than him. Both of them call Asahina Mikuru, who is technically their senior, using such patterns. Haruhi goes even further and refers to her by her first name, showcasing exactly how the power dynamics really play out. Even the all respectful Koizumi and all simp Kion don't call her Asahina Senpai, showing how weak willed and low on the pecking order she actually is. I can understand in a sense why this was kept for a very specific moment. A very early crucial scene plays off of a very common visual novel situation. Let's call it the Yobiste moment, where one of the heroines will ask the main character to call her by her given name without any honorifics, aka Yobiste, which usually implies a significant relationship upgrade, if not outright starting dating. Asahina tells Kion to call her Mikuru, hinting at such a flag having been triggered. But Kyung continues to call her Asahina san for the remainder of the show. Whether a form of conscious rejection, discomfort, or not wanting to trigger Haruhi's jealous wrath, it's symbolic of their purposefully stagnated relationship despite obvious mutual attraction. And it's contrasted with Kyung becoming one of the few characters to call Haruhi Haruhi just a few canonical episodes later, you know, yeah. the weird fucking chronological thing has got. The use of Miss in this scene and beyond might have been a way to try and keep that nuance of the scene, of the conscious rejection of the exact distance between the two characters. But I don't think that the trade off was worth it. Kion calling her Miss Asahina feels out of place for what is supposedly a very casual relationship of unusually unequal status. And it feels a bit weird that such a sardonic and lazy teenager would call his Moe crush. The same way he would his math teacher. In another example, in a little show called. What's that one? Nah, I'm just kidding. I know the name of the show. In Shinseki Evangelion, English Ray calls her teammates Pilot Ikari and Pilot Soryu, which is a pretty decent way to show the awkward and strictly protocol nature of the relationships. But it loses nuance in regards to Shinji, especially since she also occasionally just calls him, well, Shinji. 
Japanese Rei calls him Ikari-kun, which is still quite distant, but Asuka is simply Unit 2's pilot, showing the different level of distance she has between the two. It's also notable that Shinji is the only main member of the cast she doesn't refer to by title. Misato, Gendo, Ritsuko, everyone is just referred to by their military rank, and in regards to her classmates, she doesn't call them anything at all, showing just how significant her relationship with Shinji actually is. I couldn't in good conscience say any of these examples are bad translations. This stuff is really, really untenable. But it shows how direct translation is more often than not, not the best path to take. Probably the most common route then is to just ignore them. The nuance is too hard to convey, there's no natural sounding English equivalent, it's not that important to the story, let's just drop them, come on, yeah, let's get it, let's go to lunch, come on, I'm buying, let's go. Again, this can be a good option if the script is right. Maybe if it's a story set outside of Japan, or if it's in a fantasy setting, or they choose an appropriate English nickname. And, uh, oh, the, how do I get back outside? Alright, because it's a reshoot. But I'm annoyed at what usually comes with this, and what I think is a far bigger problem than the actual dropping of the honorific. Changing everybody's relationship in the story so that they're all on a first name basis. Family name comes first in a lot of Asian countries, and using somebody's given name is usually a sign of familiarity. In fact, in the Yobistem movement, the switch from family name to given name often has more weight than the lack of honorific. So whenever a translation sets to everybody being on a first name basis by default, a lot of the complexity of the web of character interactions are lost. Going back to Gundam, Shinji refers to almost every character in the show by first name, even the adults, albeit with some, except for Rei, who he always refers to only as Ayano. Despite being the same age and their unique connection, there is still an indescribable distance between them. So when he often calls her Rei in the English dubs, a lot of that nuance is just gone. It's even worse on her side, since in Japanese, she's consistently the only character to never call him by his first name. The use of names is a big part of Ava's complex web of dysfunctional relationships. Shinji has his own Yobistem moment with Asuka after the DDR episode, but they never go any further to get close to one another. Conversely, Misato and Kaji, whose relationship parallels theirs, only ever refer to each other by family name, despite the fact that they used to date, and they never take that intimate step even after they reconcile. I have far less sympathy for the localization team here. You know, actually, fuck, I have none, because calling somebody by their last name in English is still relatively natural, especially in fiction. It's all but encouraged in political, military, and sporting environments. And it's not that unusual to refer to friends, coworkers, classmates by last name, especially if they have a common given name. Most will they or won't they dynamics in American television also heavily use this with Scalder and Molly from The X-Files, Fry and Leela from Futurama, House and Cuddy, Bones and that dude. And some characters are iconically known only by their last name. Imagine for a second if everybody on Seinfeld referred to Kramer as Cosmo. Not only would it sound weird, but a lot of the nuances of the character interactions would be lost with him, since the only people to call him by first name are his mother and the various women he somehow manages to pull. It can even be as subtle and embedded in the language as it is in Japanese. For example, in the original Blade Runner, all of the humans are referred to by their last name, and all of the replicants are referred to by first name. Proving once and for all that Deckard was not a replicant, fuck off Ridley, you're not understanding your own fucking story, fucking cunt. I just think that when you keep this kind of thing, it adds volumes, and you lose just that little bit of spark if you take it away. A high school teacher being referred to by their first name is as unusual in English as it is in Japanese. So imagine that facet being lost if Yukari-sensei from Azumanga Daio was referred to as Miss Tanazaki. It would be not understanding the source, and while that example might seem particularly obvious, the reverse happens all the time, especially in a high school setting. And it's often inescapable, because if there is an official dub, most likely the subtitles are going to be based off of that dub. It's really annoying when I'm watching an episode of Bleach, and even though I can hear that Orihime is shouting Kurosaki-kun over and over and over again, the subtitles just say Ichigo. 
So the final option would be just to leave everything as is, right? Name order, honorific, everything. Solve all problems, maintain the nuance, get rid of the headache for the localizer, move on to something much more pressing. Oh my, the wiggles. This is where we run into a problem of audience design, a term coined by Alan Bell to describe how people tend to alter their speech to match the preferences of who is listening. So for example, the way that you might talk to your best friend is gonna be very different to the way that you talk to your boss or to your grandma. Bartolomé and Cabrera wrote about it in regards to audiovisual translation, in particular subtitles. Exactly what information will be included in the subtitles is going to depend on whether it's for general captioning, for the hearing impaired, for the vision impaired, and so on. In the case of honorifics, as the general osmosis on certain otaku-related terms grows, it could potentially be in their best interest to leave the honorifics in in order to cater to that ever-familiar audience. This wouldn't be without precedent. The official release of Inglorious Bastards often doesn't translate we, assuming that the audience already knows what it means. Means yes, by the way. But that could be the very problem. Foreknowledge and potentially gatekeeping. As ingrained as the words chung and summer might be to you, they're not to everyone, especially not the way that we is. Even if it's the most otaku, reference-laden, anime-ass anime in the face of the fucking planet, there's still the potential that this is someone's first time ever viewing an anime, or someone's first ever exposure to the Japanese language at all which results in the only options being not particularly satisfying ones. You can either leave in a translator note, which disrupts the flow of the narrative and could be annoying to longtime fans, include some informational booklet in the package itself that explains the culture, the setting, those sorts of things, but that requires a physical release, or do nothing and force the fans just to simply research it on their own. Which might not seem like that big of a deal, it's just a quick Google, but for an official release, it's not an attractive prospect that your audience has to pause go away and research before they can continue to enjoy your story. And this is just for subtitles. For dubs, it's an even bigger commitment where consistency and appropriateness are vital. Chiyo-chan is still Chiyo-chan in the dub, but nobody else has any honorific. And the plot important names Takun and Haru-san are kept in the dub of Fully Coolie, but only sometimes. And then this just ultimately raises the question, where should the line be drawn? Kun and Chan might be difficult to translate, but Shacho or Nichan aren't. They have direct English translations. And going even further, it's very unnatural to use them as terms of address in English. Well, let's just say that if my sisters ever called me Big Brother unironically, I'd cut the tongues out. Translation is hard, incredibly hard. You need to not only be fluent enough in the source language to understand it and the culture that produced it inside and out, you have to be a good enough writer in the target language to produce something that feels natural in that target language, stands on its own artistically, and captures the feeling of the original. Fuck that shit, son. The last thing I would want to do is heap more hate onto a demanding, thankless, time-crunching, low-paying job. Why does that have to describe so many positions in the anime industry? Like, holy shit, I need to pick up more ethically viable hobby. I'm sure the majority of translators are more than well aware of this, can explain it in better terms than I have, and have to make these sort of decisions every single day. Aside from the first name, last name screw-ups, which I, I, I really genuinely have no compassion for that. Aside from that, I'm usually fine either way if honorifics are left in or not. But I think there is also an argument for incorporating them a little bit more. Japanese fans use honorifics when they're referring to characters in the stories that they like. Almost any conversation about Ava will refer to him as Shinji-kun. And one of my fondest memories is being at a dingy little sushi bar in Osaka, meeting a drunk salaryman who noticed my friend's Dragon Ball tattoo and then shouted, Oh, Piccolo-san! He then proceeded to belt out the most off-key rendition of Chala Head Chala I've ever heard. It was fucking awesome. And with the explosive rise of things like VTubers, many of whom have honorifics and titles embedded into their nicknames, it makes sense that a lot of non-Japanese fans want to also use them to show their appreciation and support. There is no catch-all solution. Each work is case by case. But it is important to highlight some of the common situations and examples, and to be aware of exactly how tough it can be to capture something as fundamental as a person's name. And as for me, 
Call me Ishmael. Like, don't call, call me Jaden. Don't call me cynic. I mean, like, I noticed, like, I shot myself in the foot when I did that. And, like, I just thought the alliteration was cool and everything. But then people started calling me cynic, and I'm like, that's fucking cringe, bro. I don't want to touch any of that shit. Just call me Jaden. That's pro probably shouldn't use my actual birth name either. But like, I don't know, like, what else? I'm not gonna go around giving myself like some.